Hey folks, it's Paul Joseph Watson here for Prison Planet Live. Now, like any technology, the internet is a double-edged sword, but is the World Wide Web literally rewiring our brains, dumbing us down by destroying our ability to think analytically and infantilizing our minds in the process? Are we becoming a world of wireheads as the constant onslaught of new information reduces our attention span to nothing thereby eviscerating our ability to concentrate. Some neuroscientists say that the internet is remolding brains to rely on associative thinking, which leaves us incapable of reading or writing at any length. But Oxford University's Susan Greenfield goes further, warning that the likes of Facebook and Twitter are giving people what amounts to a lobotomy of their empathy. Quote, we know how small babies need constant reassurance that they exist, she told the UK's Daily Mail. My fear is, is that these technologies are infantilizing the brain into the state of small children who are attracted by buzzing noises and bright lights, who have a small attention span and who live for the moment. And Greenfield even fears that real conversation may eventually give way to sanitized screen dialogues. Now, there are Facebook and Twitter obsessives who can barely visit the bathroom without posting a status update about it. To these people, privacy, individualism, and merely the nagging voice of their own conscience are terrifying prospects. They constantly need to fill their environment with sound and fury, signifying nothing. To them, silence is torture, considered thought and peace of mind is anathema. So how do we reach out to people with often complex information when their brains have been frazzled to the point where they can barely maintain a conversation? This is a book. Oh yes, remember these things. 40% <clears throat> of Americans read one or less over the course of a whole year. A quarter of Americans don't read any books at all. And a lot of our young people only read books because they're forced to do so for school and college. Too many words, not enough pictures, and definitely no videos of dancing penguins. Now, American technologist Nicholas Carr fears that someone or something has been tinkering with his brain, remapping the neural circuitry, reprogramming the memory. His friends tell him how they find it impossible to absorb information contained in a longer article, for example. Writing for Atlantic Magazine, Carr asks, is Google making us stupid? Now we've had to adapt our message to still be relevant in this brave new world of, super of superficial sound bites. If I'd have written all this up in a three page article, a lot of people would have simply ignored it. So what do you think? Are social networking websites and the internet in general destroying our ability to think analytically and in any significant depth? How can we craft our message to compete in this world of information overload and 21st century wireheads? Leave your comments below or in a video response, but make sure that it's no longer than three minutes, otherwise I might get bored and start watching YouTube clips of sneezing pandas. Bye.